Okay, guys, welcome back. We've got it on the bench. I've actually replaced the screen with their RGB screen and have removed the white screen that I put in there, the white backlight, sorry, for the screen that I put in from Hobby King. I've put theirs in. There's plenty of videos showing you how to put a, a backlight into one of these LCDs, so I don't think I want to do something again that so many people have done before me and have done it well. There's some out there showing you how to do that quite, quite good. So where I'm up to is I've got the board back in, I've screwed it down, and I've drilled out the posts that this screw here and this screw here use. They use a little thin screw like the center screws of the board use and the, and smarty parts smarty parts have supplied a a screw which is the same thread and size as the corner screws which you will note is about three quarters of a mil bigger than the center screws so you've got to drill it out with a 2.38 drill bit or a 332. So Imperial 332 or metric 2.38. I think I've used a 2 mil and I've reamed it a little bit as I did it. Um, as you can see, looking in here, the only cable which is reconnected to this board once you put your screen back in, of course, is your ribbon for the LCD. It's got to go back in. Be very careful with your ribbons. And this particular cable over here, which I think is a six pin cable, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that six pin goes back in. The rest don't. Leave the rest out. All right, so just leave them sitting out. Now, what you can do is pre-set up the board with the big red patch lead and your USB lead in there. Don't worry about your telemetry lead yet. We'll think about that with the XJT connection, okay? XJT module, we'll think about where we're going to take that telemetry lead. What you do need to do though is on the back of your board there's a slot for the 12 volt, oh sorry, the 3 volt uh, button battery, which is a, CR1220, you need a CR1220, little button battery, you get them from your supermarkets, get them on eBay, I, I ordered mine at the same time as I ordered my Smarty parts board, I ordered the batteries, I ordered a two pack from Hong Kong and it was two bucks. Alright, so install that, okay, your, uh, the button battery goes that way up, positive up, it'll take some pressure to force in and it'll snap under little tabs that are in here. Let me get that focused, but you should be sitting flush like that. Put the top of the battery underneath this bridge here. Okay, guys, I've had to put that board in there um, off camera for, because not only are the posts not drilled out, of course your um, original motherboard in there would also uh, need drilling. Be careful that you don't crack that as well. Uh, there are a couple of traces that come pretty close within a few mil of the hole, so just be careful. So what I did was I drilled through the board and back into the post and drilled out and blew all the swarth, plastic swarth out of the, out of, out of the case, cleaned it back out. Now, I also, while I had the drill going, I drilled a couple of holes underneath the speaker from the other side, of course, there are some very small holes in it um, to let the stock 
beeper sound, warning beeper sound come through, but I drilled four larger holes into the grill to let that speaker sound come out a lot easier. Now, so, so far so good. We haven't turned it on yet. You can see that I've done the red ribbon that's been put in. It's quite... It's quite a, um, a hard plug to plug in, so make sure you've seated it all the way. You should have no gap along the top of the plug, and the same on the other side as well. It's quite hard to seat. All right, so push hard, and you'll get it in. All right, so I'll carry on with the rest of the plugs, and what they're going to be is, these are the ones that now go in, because we've left them out. This one goes, it's a five pin, goes to the five pin hole. I believe this is a, what's that, what is that? Three, six, that's a nine pin. That's going there. And then our other eight pin. No, it's a nine again, sorry guys. Goes there. So the only actual one that still stays on your board is here. Now your front case goes here. Okay, so the front case, oh sorry, the back of the case I should say, is going into this group of pins here. Okay, so I'll get all those pushed in and we'll come back and I'll show you it all together before we put the top on. And then we'll put the top on or the back on, whichever way you look at it. And we'll put the battery back in and we'll power it up and see what happens. Okay. All right, so um, there you see I've placed the speaker in. I haven't put the foam over the speaker yet, but I'm just going to put a piece of the foam packing that came with it and jam that underneath there like that. And there you go. Speaker put in, a little bit of foam pushed in, holding it in there. That's only going to maybe mute that old beeper, but we don't need the old beeper anymore. We're, we'll be using a speaker. So that's sort of like kept that in there. We'll see how she rocks when she uh, goes back together. Okay, so that's the USB plug cable just there on the corner going up to the little clip and end that fits quite well in the battery compartment. There's the 6 pin and the 9 pin plugged in. The ribbon that they supply there's the original cable that unplugged from the right hand side of the motherboard's screen just there. I'm just there and pointing out that that's where the last plug's got to be plugged in for the um, back of the case for the pots and that. For the power, I should say. And there's the original plug that you leave in, the only one that's on your board. And that one in the middle of the screen there is the um, bottom of the board. That was the LCD backlight. Right, we're all together. We've even got the 9 Extreme sticker on. I have cheated. And I've turned it on, so unfortunately you don't see it say alert bad EEPROM, press any button. And so I pressed the button, that red flashed screen turned into welcome to 9XER Sky. So I'll just turn that screen on. What I have to do is actually do a quick cut edit and turn the contrast of the camera right down 
so we can actually see the screen. Okay, you saw it start up with a splash screen. That's my first model in there, my Quadi 450. If you actually hold this key here on your right hand side menu key, you can navigate. It's much more intuitive than the old software to use. These are all the different channel settings that you can, sorry, not channel settings, but screens of what channels you have on that particular one. And you're back into showing your voltage, the battery in the unit, in the transmitter. So you can have a timer. Flight time is off. That's what it's saying, I think, or timer is off. That's showing you your position of your sticks on there. You can see your sticks moving around. See your trims. It's all quite clear. In here, you can actually see your channels moving. So on this Quaddy, if I had APM with six position switch, got one position, two position, three position, four position, five position, six position. You can actually see that going across on channel five there. Channel three is my throttle on that left hand side. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. It was pretty easy to um, set up that switch. There's a lot of information out there on ER, ER Sky or ER9X. So I won't re-go over that, rehash that. Right, this is in your model setup there. Did I enjoy the build of the Smarty Pants board? Yes, I did. It was easy. Um, the no soldering option is a great option. You just screw it down and off you go. Shame you had to drill out the posts and they supplied the wrong screws. Um, but hey, you get that. Um, we're the type of guys who are opening up everything and changing stuff in your boards and that. So, you know, a little bit of a disappointment. It's not straightforward. Screw it in and you have to get your drill out and drill a few things. But hey, life's like that sometimes. Um, but besides that, yeah, I enjoyed it. It happened easily. Um, it works. I'm having fun programming all the uh, parameters into the radio at the moment. Um, it's intuitive. It's fairly basic. You listen to a YouTube on some guy doing something before you, and you look at your radio and you do it. It's pretty easy. So, yes, um, let me just say one more time. Go and grab hold of one of Steve Morehouse's Smarty Parts um, Ignite Extreme boards, the solderless options that gives you speaker, gives you SD card, gives you a red, green, blue backlight for your LCD. Um, it's a really good option for your telemetry. Uh, I'm going to do a quick little video on how you use pin 5 inside your JR module since we're already in there uh, cutting out the back of the post so this one fits. Uh, I will go down the road of doing the internal telemetry connection so you're not plugging in the back of the JR unit um, at the XJT module. So let me put that down. Um, in a quick wrap up, yes, I enjoyed the build of the Smarty Pants board and everybody should go out and buy one who owns a 9X and has been scared like I was of starting to solder all around the board and that's your only transmitter. If it's your only transmitter, you whack it in. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, pull it out. Just go back to normal and fly. 
and then the next weekend have another go. So it's a great option. All right. So if you haven't subscribed to me before, subscribe. We're going to do a heap of vids on the FlySky JR coming up soon, the JR modules and all the telemetry gear that goes with those. We'll get all the quads happening. There's half a dozen on the wall that fly at the moment, so let's get them started to get some telemetry feedback to your radio. Won't that be fun? All right, that's it. See you next time.